Copyright that motherfucker, suck it now. Queef! Hey, what's up, guys? It's Brody from Boston. Uh, do you want to get off some of the medications you're on? Either antidepressants, suboxone, methadone, anything regarding medications. Well, if you do, this is the video for you. Uh, I'm, I'm going through a journey in my life where I'm trying to get as clean as possible with using natural remedies and, and healthy ways to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm healthy and clean. Uh, currently, I'm on Suboxone, Gabapentin, and Seroquel, and all three of those medications put together make a pretty nasty withdrawal. And if you don't take them at the right time, you will feel sick, and it's not fun. Uh, what I plan to get off these medications with is, you know, certain types of weed strains and CBD and stuff like that, maybe mushrooms, I can get into that too. You can also talk about natural remedies like different diets, exercises, um, vitamins that you can get from the sun called vitamin D3. It's pretty easy to get, it's free. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people out there, you know, they struggle with depression and that's somebody like me. Well. I, I struggle with depression due to my drug addiction that I suffered when I was really young. You know, I put myself through it. I'm not very proud of it. But um, uh, in this video, you know, I, I'm a Suboxone person and I go see my Suboxone doctor once every two weeks. And when I go, I take a urine test and I get my results and I get them printed out for me and I can see exactly where my Suboxone levels are and I can show you guys the progression from every two to three weeks, lowering my dose and what it's doing and when I'm fully off of it, uh, we'll be able to tell right from the tests. Also, a, uh, I'm a carpenter from Boston. Uh, I suffered getting assaulted on, on the job and it's a pretty crazy story. If you wanna go into that, I can definitely show you guys that in another video. Uh, another thing we could talk about is uh, cigarettes. Uh, I used to be a hardcore drug addict who smoked a lot of cigarettes. I was smoking since I was 14 years old and I ended up quitting pretty recently, just about, I'd say a month ago, and it's been going pretty good. You know, quitting cigarettes is was extremely easy for me and I can literally give you guys step-by-step step what to do on how to beat cigarettes the same way I did. And literally it's, it's nothing. Like all you need is just a couple things, like a strong mindset, uh, uh, fucking nicotine replacement therapy and a couple good night's sleeps and you will be off of cigarettes and you wouldn't even be thinking about it. Like I used to think about having a cigarette once every 45 minutes and it was pretty drastic what I was doing to my body. I mean, nobody really gets into it, but cigarettes prevent your body from healing. And, it, and if you really do want to get off these medications, like something I recommend is quitting cigarettes. That's why that was one of the first things I quit. I mean, some people would say, oh, I need cigarettes to quit. But if you think about it, it's more of a disadvantage because they're preventing your body from healing. You know, when you come off Suboxone, you, you got these withdrawals. The cigarettes is only going to make it worse. You know, it's it's the concept of it, it's just like being sick and smoking cigarettes. It's the same thing. It, it, it will extend your sickness a week or two even later. You know, that's insane. A whole week or two later, just because I want to smoke. Uh, marijuana, that's something I don't want to quit. I, I don't want to quit that for the rest of my life, but I definitely do want to take tolerance breaks. I want to become an adult who, you know what I'm saying? Who, who is not addicted to something like a little child, you know, I want to be an adult who, who has, you know, his shit together and, you know, very accountable person, you know, show up to work every day, give a hard day's work and be very appreciative for what I got. You know, another thing is too, I don't want to fucking go through the withdrawals every day. You know, waking up, taking medications just to get out of bed is not fun. And that's exactly what I do. You know, and a lot of times I don't even want to get out of bed due to the depression and stuff like that. But uh, my plan would be to quit cigarettes, which I did. Um, and I could literally show you guys how to do that. It's not hard. Um, quit cigarettes, quit Suboxone, quit Gabapentin, and then finally quit my SSRI, which is serotonin, I mean, uh, Seroquel 400 extended release, uh, quit that. And I should be cleaner than a freaking whistle. And all of this stuff 
you know, I, how I get it to happen is with, you know, with marijuana. And I'll show you some of the medications right here, right there. I see gabapentin, 800 milligrams. Take twice a day. It's insane. That's 1,600 milligrams. Quincipine, which is the generic version of Seroquel, extended release, take that two times. Take that one time at night. Um, I also got some of my drug test results that I can show you. This is literally from today. Like, this is serious. Like, I'm trying to really do this, guys. Like, this is no, no joke. Okay, let's see. Okay. So, so for buprenorphine, which is suboxone, it's 78.0 NG slash ML. And the cutoff point is anything below 5 NG slash ML, okay? Uh, my THC levels are right around 91.3 NG slash ML. And those are the only two things that I am positive for. Okay, that's that. And every two weeks, I can show you guys this and give you guys exactly what's going on. Uh, another thing that I struggle with is, yeah, so I was assaulted on the job. And uh, it's not pretty, really. Uh, so patient is under neurological care as a result of concussion due to physical assault at work. He is suffering from post-concussion migraine headaches, difficulties with his con attention concentration see how funny that is right and said concentration i fuck up uh patient is under neurological supervision management follow up in two months so what this is basically saying that you know for me getting punched in the face i'm still dealing with the percussions of that uh through migraines and headaches and none of it's fun i was literally punched right here and this was a while ago. This was back in 2019 of May 7th, and it was not fun. I was in a basement, and I was I was, uh, I was, was basically knocked the fuck out from a sucker punch, and I did not see it coming. It came out of freaking nowhere, and I was on the ground, woke up, dudes in my face, like, what the fuck's up, what the fuck's up? And you know what? I didn't want to lose my job. I got a lot of shit riding on this, so I just walked away. I walked away. That was it. I, I was able to keep my job... He wasn't, he had to go, you know, and now I'm, I've been out of work for a while and, and, uh, you know, I, this is why I plan on quitting the medications is because I'm, I'm praying that it's going to help, help me recover, help me, uh, beat the migraines and beat the headaches. If anybody out there struggling with any of this, you know, keep your head up. It, it, it's, it gets better. Hopefully, you know, hopefully it gets better. Okay. Uh, anybody out there, I want to give you a different opinion on how, you know, doctors, how doctors are, you know, anybody who, who has a doctor or on medications, I highly suggest you listen to your doctor. Mostly everything they say is smart. And, and I'm not talking about surgeons and people who save people's lives in the surgery room. No, those people are awesome. And I highly suggest th those people are just awesome. Okay. But the people who are prescribing medications, all right? That, that's where it gets a little tricky, all right? Everything your doctor says, trust them. But on the other hand, they're idiots, okay? Because they don't really truly care for you. Because if they did, they they would give you other options and they would really prepare you for the magnitude of what you're going to do to your brain. I mean, and think about this. This is the human freaking brain. For doctors to really think that they got it as figured out as they do baffles me because they don't you know what i'm saying they, you you start giving people antidepressant medication and that just sets off a, tra a chain reaction in your brain and, and they're not too fully aware about any of this and it just it's sad you know because I've, I've watched very close people to me get put on medications who really shouldn't be on the medications you know i mean a couple lifestyle changes like healthy exercise healthy diet healthy sleeping and, and make sure you go outdoors and socialize that does a huge difference. And I promise you, you will not be depressed. You, you don't see fucking depressed people out there running around having fun. Like you see depressed people who are really struggling with it. And uh, 
you know, on medications and, and, and they get stuck inside. And, and yeah, sometimes it works for people. And if it works for you, what do you fucking do? Great. Keep it up. That, that That's amazing. I mean, but if you are somebody like me, who's 24 and does not want to be on these medications when I'm 94, if I get there, uh, then, then you definitely want to listen to these videos. This is something I was thinking about the other day. Like if, if, if you were somebody who needs to get, let's say, say uh, you're, you're in the hospital and you need to get a, f a big surgery and this surgery is going to depend if you live or you don't and you're on plenty of medications let's say you're on Suboxone let's say you're on Gabapentin and let's say you're on <clears throat> Seracol which are the three medications I'm on the doctor looks at you a little differently than he would look at somebody who who doesn't have any medication dependency want to know why it's because somebody with no dependency they're going to say this motherfucker has to live or I'm going to lose my job but if the dude who's on Suboxone, if for some reason he doesn't live, they got plenty of excuses to say, hey, he was on Suboxone, the anesthesia, or hey, the, his blood was so thin, or hey, we used, you know what I'm saying? That's just something I think of. Maybe it might not be true. Maybe it is. You know, whatever. But what we too is, is we got plenty of different options for, you know, making sure you got a healthy lifestyle, uh, blue light sensor and glasses, pocket pussies, uh... <laughs> different uh facial skincare remedies different sleep remedies like melatonin spray uh hemp wick fucking literally anything cool that you guys want me to review or go over this isn't going to be fully about drugs and and my recovery this is going to be a fun fun experience this isn't going to be sad nah we're going to be coming here we're going to be getting laughing like crazy because i promise you I got you guys covered with that, but, uh, like, especially if I tell you the first time I ever tried drugs or the first time I ever had a, you know, a interaction with a female, like, we can go deep into the bowels that make me who I am. Uh, another thing is to people who struggle with Suboxone, uh, they also struggle with, you know, going to the bathroom. You know, that's something I do. Well, you got to really manage that correctly. Uh, some ways I can teach you how to do that. Add more fiber in your diet. Add more fruits and vegetables. Those are clearly two ways. Like, if you're not healthy and you go to the doctors, what does the doctor says? Eat more fucking fruits and vegetables. Cut out the bullshit sugar. Uh, that's another thing, too, is like my nephew, he's, he's a beautiful, healthy young baby boy. And his body, he's got glycogen storage disorder type A, which prevents his body from storing the proper sugars and being able to digest them properly like we would and use them for energy. So he's, uh, he's very, he's very like a normal kid. Other kids are super hyped up on sugar, you know, eating Captain Crunch and, you know, freaking Lucky Charms or whatever. And then they go run around and then they go, oh, look at poor Jimmy jacking off in the corner. What's the matter with him? Yeah, the kid's jacked up on sugar. No, let's just get him Adderall, he'll be all right. That's another thing, too, is you're fucking with the brains of children so young. If you give them Adderall at that age, they're going to be Adderall on Adderall for the rest of their lives. Think about what that does to their kidneys, liver, pancreas. I don't even know what the fuck the pancreas does, but pancreas, appendix, all, all that soft fucking shit in your stomach. That's insane, dude. That's insane. Uh, also... We'll talk workouts. Um, we'll talk cool things that I can do that other people can't. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? It's Brody from Boston, and this is High Chemical Romance. And that was part one to my intro. Basically, I ran you guys through exactly what we're going to be doing here and how we're going to be doing it. I hope you guys liked the video, and part two is coming up soon. Uh, when I first started this, I made videos that were like 45 minutes, hour and 20 minutes long, and... Now I realize that uh, YouTube ain't gonna allow me to do that. I can only do 15 minutes at the beginning. But uh, once we uh, get rolling, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to hit those fucking long podcast hours. Uh, I hope you guys like it. Check out part two. It's gonna be super interesting. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna throw in my first two week checkup at the end of that video to show you guys where I'm at. I love you guys. Thanks for fucking following me. Thanks for subscribing. Yeah, please hit that subscribe button because that's the only way we're going to get more videos, you know what I'm saying? Like, comment, subscribe, keep this shit positive. Don't, don't hit me up with negative shit. Cause I'm, I'm trying to be positive right now. You can see on my face that I'm withdrawing. I got like a thin layer of sweat. I'm beat up, but whatever. I'm going to do this for you guys. I love you. Have a great day.